Numerous women have accused the Hollywood tycoon of sexual harassment over nearly three decades. High-profile victims include stars like Ashley Judd and Rose McGowan. When you think of billionaires' wives, you picture Chanel bags, luxury yachts, private jets and mansions. However, beneath the glamour lies a dark reality and hidden scars. Anna Murdoch, born Anna Torv in 1944, grew up far from the luxury she later experienced. The daughter of a Scottish dry cleaner and a merchant seaman, she started her journey in the newsroom of the Sydney Daily Mirror at 18. There, she met Rupert Murdoch, who was set to inherit his father's media business. Together, they navigated the challenges of media politics, with Anna providing balance to Rupert's ambition. The Murdoch family faced intense scrutiny and criticism, particularly in the 1970s and 80s. But Anna remained steadfast by Rupert's side. By the 1990s, the Murdoch empire was at its peak, but personal turmoil began to surface. Anna, who had dedicated her life to her family and the business, found herself at a crossroads. The unravelling of their marriage was a gradual process, reflecting the strains of their high-profile life. As the 20th century ended, the public was stunned when in April 1998, the Murdochs announced their separation, ending a 31-year marriage. Anna Murdoch described the psychological toll of her marriage ending as emerging from a deep mental illness, highlighting the emotional cost of being a billionaire's spouse. Anna's betrayal was profound when she discovered Rupert's affair with Wendy Deng, which left her in disbelief. After the divorce, Anna found solace in independence and remarried financier William Mann, embracing a life marked by mutual respect and shared values. Despite her turmoil, Anna remained concerned about the Murdoch Empire and her children's roles within it. Ruth Madoff, associated with one of the most notorious financial frauds in history, started her life in a modest Queens, New York family. In the late 1950s, she married Bernie Madoff, whose ambition led to their financial empire. Ruth's father, an accountant, helped Bernie establish his initial network of clients. Despite her composed exterior, she harbored insecurities and jealousy. The revelation of Bernie's fraud shattered their constructed world of prestige and prosperity. In late 2008, the financial world was shocked by Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme revelation. At the center was Ruth Madoff, who fell from her queen-like status in New York society. Her life of luxury unraveled rapidly after Bernie's arrest, leaving her in a stark reality. Once wealthy, Ruth now relied on government assistance, and her tarnished reputation made her an outcast. Elaine Wynne, known as the Queen of Las Vegas, transformed from a billionaire's wife into a formidable businesswoman. Born Elaine Farrell Pascal in 1942, she married Steve Wynne in 1963. Together, they turned Las Vegas into a global entertainment hub. Elaine's influence extended beyond decor. She was instrumental in the Mirage Resort's IPO, raising $230 million. The Bellagio, with its fountains and art, set new standards for luxury. Win Las Vegas, which opened in 2005, was another testament to their vision, with Elaine's role more prominent than ever. However, their personal life crumbled as they divorced for the second time in 2010. The divorce was contentious, with Elaine receiving $1 billion in Wynn's stock. Despite the glamorous public image, Elaine's story reflects the darker struggles for power and autonomy faced by billionaire wives. The case of Rebecca Zahau is a complex curtain woven with threads of mystery, tragedy and controversy. It began in the summer of 2011 in the peaceful seaside town of Coronado, California, at the historic Spreckles Mansion. This luxurious estate, home to pharmaceutical magnate Jonah Shacknai, became the backdrop for a chilling and perplexing story that would captivate the nation. Rebecca Zahau, a vibrant 32-year-old, was in a relationship 
with Jonah Shacknai, CEO of Medici's Pharmaceutical. Life with Jonah introduced Rebecca to a world of affluence but came with unforeseen costs. On July 11, 2011, tragedy struck when Jonah's six-year-old son, Max Shacknai, fell over a second-floor banister while under Rebecca's care, sustaining critical injuries. The accident left Max in a coma and cast a shadow of grief over the mansion. In the days following the accident, the mansion was enveloped in sorrow as the family closed with the potential loss of young Max. On the morning of July 13th, Adam Shacknai claimed to have found Rebecca's lifeless body hanging from a balcony, her wrists and ankles bound, hands behind her back. In shock, he called 911 and cut her down, attempting CPR to no avail. Despite the bizarre circumstances, Rebecca's death was ruled a suicide. The autopsy revealed head trauma injuries, which the San Diego medical examiner suggested could have occurred as she went over the balcony. Dr. Wecht believed the fractures in Rebecca's throat were consistent with manual strangulation, not suicidal hanging, declaring her death a homicide. Disturbing evidence, such as a knife found at the scene with Rebecca's menstrual blood on the handle and a cryptic message scrawled in black paint on the bedroom door reading, She saved him, can you save her? deepened the mystery. The presence of Rebecca's thumbprint on a paint tube and paint on her body did little to clarify who wrote the message. Handwriting experts could not conclusively determine its author due to the block lettering. A civil suit was filed by the Zahao family named Adam Shacknai as responsible for Rebecca's death. The suit suggested a different sequence of events, alleging that Rebecca met with violence rather than self-harm. The aftermath of the trial left the public with more questions than answers. The Zahao family continued their pursuit of justice, seeking to have the case reopened and the cause of death reclassified. Rebecca Zahao's death remains a haunting mystery, a narrative punctuated by grief, speculation, and the relentless pursuit of truth, highlighting that the lives of billionaire companions can be fraught with unseen dangers and unspeakable sorrow. In the bustling city of New York, where ambitions shine as brightly as the lights of Times Square, a young British woman named Georgina Chapman was on the brink of setting the fashion world ablaze. In the wings of her sartorial stage was Harvey Weinstein, a man whose influence in Hollywood was profound and pervasive. Weinstein, co-founder of Miramax and later the Weinstein Company, was a kingmaker with the power to turn scripts into cinematic gold and actors into Oscar contenders. Despite their 24-year age gap, the connection was instant. In October 2017, the New York Times published an expose detailing allegations of sexual misconduct against Weinstein. The article depicted a man who had used his power to exploit and intimidate women for decades. For Chapman, the scandal was a personal earthquake. Despite the turmoil, Chapman's resolve remained firm. She retreated from the public eye, focusing on her children and contemplating the next steps for her brand. In a statement to People magazine, Chapman announced her decision to leave Weinstein, expressing heartbreak for the women who had suffered and emphasizing her commitment to her children. Wendy Dung's story begins in the industrial city of Suzhou, China. Born amidst the hum of factory life, Wendy's early years were marked by a fierce determination to rise above her circumstances. Finding solace and strength in volleyball, Wendy's competitive spirit shone brightly, but her ambitions extended beyond the courts. She set her sights on America. Wendy's opportunity came in the form of Jake Cherry, an American businessman overseeing a factory in China. At 19, Wendy convinced Cherry to sponsor her studies in the United States. The Cherries, Jake and his wife Joyce, welcomed Wendy into their home, setting the stage for a dramatic turn of events. 
Wendy's relationship with Jake evolved from mentor and mentee to something more intimate, and they married in 1990. This union, strategic for Wendy, lasted two years and seven months, ending when Jake discovered Wendy's relationship with David Wolf, a man closer to her age. Wendy's path led her to Hong Kong, where she worked for Star TV, a subsidiary of Rupert Murdoch's News Corps. By 1999, Wendy and Rupert were married, a union that took place on his yacht Morning Glory just three weeks after Murdoch's divorce from his second wife, Anna. The couple's life was one of power and prestige, with two daughters, Grace and Chloe, and Tony Blair, former British Prime Minister, as Grace's godfather. However, rumors of Wendy's infidelity with Tony Blair surfaced in 2014, casting a shadow over the marriage. The strain became too great, and in June 2013, Murdoch filed for divorce. Despite the divorce, Wendy emerged resilient, maintaining a cordial relationship with Murdoch for the sake of their children. What are your thoughts on the truth about the billionaire wives? Share that in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the notification bell to stay updated with the latest in the luxury world only here at Luxury Mindset. See you in the next video.